Welcome to part two of Make Your Own Spelljammer here on Fasciano Productions. I'm Bobby Fasciano, and today we're going to be making four different ships. And they are, of course, the Nautiloid, the Mind Flares, the Squid Ship, and the Hammerhead, not pictured here, unfortunately, a new design. And then lastly, the Flying Fish, which should be for good additions to your spell jamming table. So, without further ado, let's get into the planning phase here and make your own spell jammer. So let's get started here with our planning. First, we're going to plan for the Nautiloid. Now, I had a cool idea for this one where we could actually just use a real shell. Uh, I've spent many vacations on Cape Cod, and my grandmother was over and was nice enough to bring over a collection of old shells that we're going to use. Now, same strategy as last video, and if you haven't watched part one, be sure to watch it. This video will make a lot more sense if you do. Some of the same strategies will be used. And we're gonna just going to make a same graphics medium chipboard version of that chip. And then we're going to use the tentacles for, made of green stuff. We're going to mold that coming out of the shell and out of the ship to resemble the nautiloid tentacles that they have. And we're going to make a second level with some more chipboard. And that is all going to look Hopefully, fantastic. Gonna paint it up a little purplish color, a little different from our other builds today. And lastly, we're gonna need a large base for the Nautiloid. Now, the Spelljammer book has released since our last video, and it doesn't actually include the sizes of the ships, which is a little disappointing, but the miniature is large for these ones, and we can pretty much approximate that the Nautiloid ship will be larger since these Mind Flare ships are usually that. Now here's another medium ship, and this is the Hammerhead. Again, a very similar design of chipboard and then green stuff, sculpting that Hammerhead shape that you see on the front of those ships. And these are known for having a lot of sails and for looking like Hammerheads. A lot of Spelljammer ships are, of course, inspired by actual creatures. And though Hammerheads don't actually have sails coming out of them, <laughs> obviously, they do have fins, and these are what these will represent. Originally, I planned for is to have two fins on each side, but you'll see that when we actually do it, we'll only do one to save some space and just to make it look a little bit better. Less accurate, but looking better, I think. Nextly, we got the squid ships, which are going to have to have various things to make them look like squid. We'll have two little horns on the back. I don't know what the correct term for this is. Um, fins, I guess, still. And then, of course, we're going to need some tentacles of their own for this one. Just four, two small ones on the front, and then two other ones in the back. You saw that picture in the very beginning of those squid ships, which have those iconic triangle sails above them. So we're going to paint those up red, and they'll look pretty nifty. Now this last ship is the Flying Fish, and this is a small ship, at least that's what the minis say. And they're known for having also a lot of sails. And on this small build, that's going to be very hard. So we're going to shorten those down a bit. But we're going to need those iconic shapes of the fishmen's and a little eyeball for uh, the resemblance that is there. So these are more like small fighters, whereas the others are actual crew chips. So this will be pretty exciting. So with all that out of the way, we got our large ships, we got our small ships, and we got our medium ships. Let's move on from the planning and towards the Nautiloid. All right, then. So these are the shells that my grandmother was so wonderful to bring up when she last came on down. And this shell looks absolutely perfect for what we're going for today. So we're going to measure that against our chipboard. Again, watch that part one video to see exactly what we're doing here. But we're just measuring and approximating it out draw up a little sharpie here, what we're going to cut out for one of the sides of the ship, and then we'll just duplicate that and do it again, and we're going to glue those things together, as you'll see in a moment, to make kind of the body, the hull of our ship. So here we see we're cutting it out, and we're just going to dry fit that, make sure it fits in. I did do this a few times, but once you get the hang of it, you get the hang of it. All right, so here we see we're measuring out that other side of the ship, we got these two things in, and we're going to take some super glue, glue them together in a second, just drop it along the edge of that. Of course, this is a larger build, so a, lot, a little bit more super glue is needed than before. 
and then we're just going to test it again as i said making sure that there's enough room for those tentacles but also it's a tight fit so it doesn't fall out we're going to glue that in i glued this in before this is more artistic recreation of what that is uh but just make sure to get those three axes and then like before we're going to make a little top to our hole there and that's already looking pretty good now here is some green stuff this is how we're going to make our tentacles you can also use milliput or whatever clay uh you like i have a little tool make sure whatever you're using it is wet or put some vaseline on it so you can shape and so the green stuff won't stick to that but will stick to everything around it and we're just going to shape those to look like tentacles that are coming out of the shell and coming out of the boat and that is looking pretty neat yeah just make sure to push it down into the shell to make it really look like this living thing that the elder brain has conjured up and that the mind flayers are now crewing for their nefarious purposes and yeah just keep shaping that and be slow and be gentle with it and here in a second you're going to see the other tentacles in there so that's the first one and now you don't do that you can do the other side make it as varied as you want i think i put in about six tentacles here but you could put in as many as you want put in one put in a thousand probably can't put in a thousand that might be a little hard might need a bigger shell but that looks pretty good of course if you want to be really accurate you have more tentacles coming out of the actual hole but i felt like that wasn't entirely needed so here is the top layer i want to make a second kind of layer of this ship have it be tiered this isn't exactly what it looks like but again at this scale we can't go for accuracy so i'd rather have some visual interest there as this ship doesn't really have any sails we're going to mix up mod pod brown and purple paint as you saw me do there and we want a color that kind of looks like this and using mod podge in there as i said in the first video we'll really seal it up and make it so perfect for the tabletop and not just immediately fall over on the floor and break so this will act as not only paint but also sealant as this is our first priming layer and we're just gonna cover that all over the whole entire ship except for the shell of course we're gonna put a few small highlights to bring out the natural colors and natural shades of the shell but mostly we want it to actually look like a shell now some people might say that well your players are just gonna say oh that's a shell but at the end of the day they could say that about literally anything so we're just gonna paint it up a tiny bit as i said bringing out that natural curvature and natural coloration and not do too much with it but still have a little bit of a look of course you can paint it up however you want i'm gonna dry brush with a gray uh dry brushing is an essential step here brings out another layer of color makes it look way less flat way less like something you painted and more like real weathered wood at this scale so you can dry brush all of the purple of the hull and we're gonna paint the tentacles a different color in a second so it doesn't matter if you get any gray on those things of course dry brushing try to get most of the paint off that brush and then just go back in it as you see i'm doing that i provide a more thorough demonstration here than just me saying last video hey dry brush that that would be good so just try to get all the edges and all the corners at least a little bit now here we see we're painting up the tentacles now i use acrylic craft paint here not miniature paint so you might have to do a few layers but it'll look pretty good at the end of the day and then i took some purple wash i use army painter washes which have color options which is really helpful and are going to help us out a lot in this video in particular as you'll see in a second and we're going to take purple we're just going to slop it on to all of these different places of the tentacles and also kind of panel lighting the actual hull of the ship there and getting all those edges just bringing in a little bit more depth to it and then we're going to bring back our violet and do a few more layers over it i would have liked to maybe just crack out so many paint at this step because this took frankly a lot of time and i wasn't that happy with the results but it looks pretty good and in the pictures you'll see in a second i think you will agree now i have that large base we made those bases last video make sure to check that out and we're going to dry fit this with the plastic rods we also did and we just need to make sure that this will actually fit onto that base so we're going to 
plan out where we're going to super glue those things to the base and that looks like it should fit so one last test and you see i've already super glued it there and now super glue to the base but hot glue the rods to the actual ship that'll provide more of a firm bond to this not exactly flat surface and also act as another clear uh, material or medium to put this through and as you see now we're gonna put one end on the shell and one end on the ship and get that in frame but then we're gonna kind of tease the hot glue up because it's such a large model we want to make sure to, to get it extra extra firm and there we go there is the nautiloid hopefully the elder brain will be happy with us and won't need to put any creepy tadpoles in our mind oh and we're already starting on the next ship this is going to be the hammerhead and this has kind of a curved design to it there's not one end that's flat so we're just going to go like this and create little like canoe structures and fill that in the same exact way as we did before and we're going to cut out a little chevron shape for the back as you'll see in the pictures this is where we'll mount the fins to in the back of this and that looks pretty good super glued on there and then we're going to get out our green stuff once again and make a little head for the hammerhead based off the actual shark. You can look at reference pictures either of the ship or of the shark to make this user tool and make sure you get those eye stalks and those eye holes uh, pushed out of there. And I'm also going to bring it up to the edge, the bridge of the nose. That'll really bring everything together. And I'm also going to put little eyes in there to uh, paint up and to provide washes for. And once more, using the same trick we did last time to make that little beam for the mast. And we're going to paint it up with the same paint we used last video with the brown. And dry brushing a lighter brown. Ooh, dropped it there. But it looks saved. Uh, except for the red paint on my nails there. And yeah, look at that. That looks pretty nifty. We're going to go back in with a silver. This is an actual mini paint. And silver up that whole top section. Pretty much all the hammerhead. And then coat this thing in brown wash, panel line the, those parts and by the fins, and then also make sure to put it on all of the silver. You can go as hard or as not as you want with this. Uh, it can either end up looking patinaed or brand new if you want. And get some triangles cut out from our sail mixture. And yeah, there we go. As I said, we only put one sail on unlike the plan, but came out looking pretty good. Get it on a medium miniature base, and we're going to be golden with this quick little hammerhead build. This actually ship took me way less time than the other one, so uh, it could be a good neat one to start off. And look at that right there is our hammerhead looking pretty good. Uh, again, hot glue so we can move that around, and I made two of them for the tabletop there. And here we go with our squid ships. Now, these have kind of a pointy back and a flat base and are often seen at an angle in some of the old pictures and aren't really anymore. So I'm kind of going for kind of a blend between the two styles, the 80s style and the modern style. And here we go with those little fins in the back, this time made of chipboard so we can paint them bright red. And that will be good. And kind of looks like almost like a hot dog shape. Take green stuff, this will be used for the tentacles once more, and put a little face on the front, and roll those out, and we're going to make two little uh, tendrils right there, and then we're going to roll longer ones and make two bigger tentacles for the sides of the ship, and we're just going to mount those on there, and that's already looking pretty good. Now these have two masts, and we're going to super glue those on there. And then pin it up once more. Same steps as per usual. Except we need red for the actual tentacles of this. Now, however much you want to paint this red, it's up to you. We're going to dry brush. We're going to, oh, I'm speeding through this. And now we're going to have a red wash too for all those parts we paint red, like the face and the tentacles and those back fins. And this is going to bring out, make kind of look more like a natural ship rather than just a bright red thing painted on. And we can go back and highlight that if we want. 
and then we're going to glue it up and it should be all ready. Another fast ship done and out of the way. The same techniques we were using before. And with that speed run out of the way, here we're going to move on to our flying fish ships. These are two layers, so we're going to make a top and a bottom to this. The same technique we were using before, see that is our bottom, and then we have a smaller kind of boat shape, shape we've made, and that is just going to go on top. We're going to super glue that in there, and put a little green stuff for the eye of the thing right on that top spot, and we can shape that up however we end up wanting to. And yeah, now we're going to paint it up with our brown once more. I did paint one of them red. Now, some of the pictures have various colors. You can paint them blue, you can paint them turquoise, whatever you want. But I did want one of them red and two of them brown, so I could use these in a very specific encounter for my group that's coming up. Gold painted the eye, and then we're going to wash it all up. And I'm also going to put on some burnt orange for the dry brush for the entirely red ship. And you'll see in a second with the fins, this accidentally turned into the Magikarp ship, so I'm going to have a hard time getting that one from my mind. And here we go with the small little fish fins we're going to use, and we're going to cut a small strip of that uh, paper we made before for the sails, and we're going to cut it up. That will be an easier way to super glue it rather than dealing with those teeny tiny bits on this strange little place we're going to put it in. And this should work. We're going to cut a little notch out of it to get that iconic kind of inset that these flying fish have. And we're going to do that on the other sides too. Just glue on the triangles and then cut from there, as you'll see in a moment. And that'll give it that iconic flying fish sail shape. Just pluck it out. And there we go. See here are the rectangles on all three of those. And then those are them all cut out and done and ready for the tabletop. We're going to glue those up. But first, we need to make some small miniature bases. Same strategy as before with the painting on that as we go to that footage now. So some violet, some turquoise, and we're going to layer that on, get a cool kind of nebula shape, and get a few hues on there too. As we can see, just like last time, just like last video, make sure to check that out if I haven't already said that before. And all of the wonderful content here on Fascinator Productions, be sure to like and subscribe and do all those wonderful things. And yeah, here we go with our stippling brush. Stipple on some white for the stars. Load that up, I just cut a very, very bad old brush. And then, of course, we got to rim the bases black. Very important step and makes it look a lot less messy and a lot more official. And there we go for the flying fish. Here's one last shot of them before we get to the final end results for all of these in context. And here we go with the space we made last time. Here's our nautiloid standing there very triumphant and majestically in the setup that I made. And yeah, that looks pretty good on the tabletop. Keep in mind, they look good up close, but your players will be doing these for a few feet away. Those are the hammerheads next to the nautiloid there, and the squid chips with those brilliant red colors that we did, and the flying fish, including that little magic carp fish in the middle. And here is a whole big epic battle set up with everything we made today. Thank you so much for joining us here in Fasciana Productions. You guys mean so much to me, and the support for our last video was really immense and we're so happy to see that so many of you people are enjoying it. We got a lot of content coming up, whether it be D&D and Spelljammer or whether it be Magic or some other fun videos. And of course you can see the Bombards and Galleons there in this shot that we made last video. So go check that out, go subscribe to our channel and go check out our other videos. We got a lot coming up from Fascinata Productions. Thank you so much. Peace out. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And stay tuned for everything here at Fasciano Productions. Thanks, everybody.